feel like. Is it important for running for running backs to find a rhythm? I think it. Um, I, I think it can be. You know. You know. I think it's hard to play four running backs in, in the course of a game. And uh, and then I think some of it is. You know. I don't. I don't think it's. Um, you know, we run an RPO-based offense, so you have several runs that, heck, the number the numbers might have been there. You know, the the precision might have been there, but we pulled it out because maybe the numbers were were good outside as well. So, uh, you know, sometimes I think it. You know, you want to be efficient, and uh, we got to, uh, as I said last night, you know, my coaches show. You know, we need to be a little more detailed. A guy here and there doesn't take but just one guy not doing his job or uh, being uh, not as detailed as we need to be. And uh, everything can go to go to heck quickly. And Cincinnati was a really good front. And they had some uh, – did some good things uh, uh, schematically. And they're, again, they're, they're really – it's a really good uh, physical group of guys. And uh, But we got to be a little more precise and detailed. And so – uh, again, DeMarco does a great job at evaluating those guys through the course of the week and who's who's practicing uh, the best, and so that's how we make you know a lot of those decisions. So the, the sort of two on, two offs. <laughs> sort of seen the last few weeks. I don't know. Been sort of what, whatever. What was it last year? You know. Well, it just—it's well. Eric Gary had had established himself. Yeah, you know, so we'd love for somebody to establish themselves. That hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Brent, you, you mentioned uh, John Heacock and, and that Iowa State defense. I know when you were at Clemson, you went and visited Iowa mm -hmm. State. What do you maybe remember about that? And did you take anything, if anything, and implement that at all, what you're doing? Well, it was, you know, affirmation that they uh, they do a great job at, at developing and teaching and scheming. Uh, their players play with great effort and toughness and belief. Uh, they're very thorough. Uh, as a staff, and there's a lot of cohesion there inside that building, and uh, they've developed a great culture. Um, those are the things that have stood out to me, and and they built something from a systematic standpoint, philosophy standpoint, scheme standpoint that uh, you know has had longevity, you know, in the conference. They run that three-three-five type defense, and we've seen you guys run that occasionally here and there. Have you seen that defense maybe change? The way the game's being played and way offenses and maybe catching up defensively in terms of that. Um, I think there's ebbs and flows. You know, they get into a four-man fronts uh, a decent amount too, and so uh, out of the same personnel. So uh, they, that, that's their package, but they have you know a lot of uh, scheme versatility to what they can do. I don't know if teams catch up or not. I don't. You know, I, I think in the uh, you know, structurally, it, you know, there's some things that are uh, people like to say, well, they just got three guys up there. Well, let's go, you know, pound them. And that's true if you got the guys that can do that and the schemes that, that allow you to do that, potentially, you know. But I've seen the schemes work pretty good at a high level against really good people, too. So I've seen the scheme get obliterated like every other scheme. Uh, you know, over the years. So, you know, the scheme's no good if the players are executing it and playing with aggression and physicality and fundamentals. And they that's what they do. They do a really good job of doing all those things. Mm -hmm. right. You're in a stretch of playing against really well-coached defensive lines since that into Iowa State. For, for the running game, what kind of opportunity does that give for those guys up front, your offensive line, to get into a rhythm and kind of correct some of the little things and tighten that up as you build through? Well, again, it's a different different scheme in some ways uh, at times. So uh, getting into a rhythm, I mean, I, I don't know if this provides that opportunity. I mean, every week is, is, a, is a season of its own. And uh, every scheme that you play against have has different uh, – you know, a different type of focus, but at the end of the day, you, you still want to, again, you know, come off the ball and know who to target and move people. This is still a game of leverage and inertia and physicality uh, and precision. And uh, so uh, 
you know, we've had, you know, good game control, what I like, through four games. And uh, so, uh, you know, we've had, you know, very few drives that, uh, uh, that guys were just right on and right off the field. Some of us been three and out, but some of it, you know, three and outs might look different uh, at times this year. So uh, when we have had that those, which hasn't been a lot, but, um, you know, obviously any offense uh, you strives for balance. And, uh, and we want, again, more efficiency with what we're doing in that in regards to, to the running game. Come over here to James. Thank you. Hey, you know, Dylan, the starting quarterback at OU is probably always a lightning rod in a certain extent, but how well do you feel like he played Saturday, and how well do you like feel like he's playing yeah, this year? He played, he played good, you know. He played well. He managed things well, made good decisions, uh, led with toughness, played with some toughness, had a, you know, several, you know, plus one run game uh, that went for positive yards and, uh, you know, played well. And, and does that mean he played perfect? Nobody that got on the on the plane played perfectly, and that's never expected. But uh, uh, you know, he did a lot that was you know fantastic in the game, and and uh, gave us a chance uh, to win. Brent with uh, Savion, tell us a bit more about what he's been dealing with, and, and if he's going to be in the mix these next few weeks or this week. Yeah, he's he's back. On the defense, Desan obviously got his highest snap count in, in live action. When you went back and watched the tape, was there anything in particular, or given play or not, where he looked more or less like the quintessential guy you want in that role? Yeah, I mean, he's again, he's missed a couple weeks, so uh, yeah, I mean, he's a guy that's coming out of coming out of spring that really had a really good spring and a good finish and had an excellent summer first part of camp was was great uh and i saw that he hadn't played in a little while and so he'll be the first one to tell you he's uh kind of getting back into the rhythm of what that looks like and what that process is but uh he did a nice job and I expect him to make you know improvement each and every week you know that he plays yeah, Brent, after the Tulsa game, you said you had leadership last year, just not enough of it. So what's the process been like seeing guys like Isaiah Coe, Marcus Major sort of, you know, you know, become more vocal and become those guys that you really need them to be? Well, I think it starts with their ability to lead themselves. And that's a, just a maturation. It's just becoming more mature. Your perspective maybe changes. Uh, sense of urgency maybe changes. Um, maximizing, you know, uh, their opportunities, but learning learning the value of leading themselves first, and then willing to be led, and then three becoming a leader too, and uh, all in their own ways. So it's hard to, um, you know, quantify it as much as you know. I think you you alluded to, you know, being a little more vocal in a particular huddle or in a meeting room uh, at practice, things of that nature. That comes with the confidence, learning, again, how to, how to lead. And But it starts with themselves, you know, believing in themselves, looking at themselves as, as a leader, somebody that's invested. I think that's important when you've invested as much as each of those guys have. I think it you you have some ownership, not only in your work, but in the program and and uh, for the opportunities that we have, on, you know, as a football team. So I've been proud of them, the way they've grown. and. Uh, their commitment and the care for their teammates and their again their opportunity in this football team. If you guys are 11th in third down defense uh, so far. I know it's early in the season, but maybe what do you attribute that early success to, and maybe what are you seeing different this year compared to last year? Again, um, knowledge. Guys that returning, um, we're more knowledgeable, so we're more confident, and so we're more aggressive within the scheme, um, a little more precise in the scheme uh, because of the knowledge. So our ability to execute with a little more precision is is there. Um, as we said, we've we improved our, our strength and our speed and our explosiveness with players that are on the roster. Uh, and then, you know, uh, players
players that we recruited um, also have added, you know, to that mix. And and same things applies to them, you know, uh, you know where they're at when they got here. You know, several of them got here in January. So a few guys got here in in the summer. So it's a credit to them the work that they've put in and over the last several months. And uh, and then again, cohesion, uh, chemistry, leadership. Again, guys have invested a lot of time. You know, so it's not just one thing. It's not just a couple of things. It's about everything. And that's the third down area is a byproduct of um, again the small incremental improvement in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. Darren, are you familiar with the uh, the way that Notre Dame Ohio State game ended Saturday night? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, did you use that? I know coaches are always looking for teaching tools, right, or opportunities to reinforce some things. Did, did you use what happened in Notre Dame? Just with myself. Huh? Just with myself. Yeah. Yeah. How did that look? I mean, we all talked about it as coaches. Yeah. And um, really, the players, you would think, and I, I, don't, I don't want to even probably talk about it, but I mean, it's like, note to self, make sure you don't assume anything. I, I, I say it, I, it's, it's not, I've, I've, you know, your gut hurts, really, I'll be honest, because uh, that's not the way you want to, you know, and that did affect, you know, the, certainly the second play, uh, without question. Um, but I sat there and watched it live, and I, my wife is sitting there, and uh, my f father and mother-in-laws, and I'm like, they don't have enough guys. I said, they got a problem on that right side. And sure enough, that's Captain Obviously. He ran the zone right there. But, yeah, you feel bad, you know, for him because that was an incredibly well-played game, tough, physical. Uh, it was a, that was a, a fabulous football game. I admired both defenses, you know. Uh, you know, the quarterbacks. I, it was a great game. Uh, yeah. Just and, and Marcus, Marcus handled it great. He did what any head coach would. It's, it's on me. Right. But is that is that what a head coach is left to do in a situation like that? Or does he got to go back to the staff and say, guys, you've got to be my I eyes? Think it's everybody. Yeah, yeah everybody right. has to have ownership in that. Uh, no doubt. A uh, head coach ultimately takes responsibility for everything that's out there 100%, as he should. Uh, but you know, everybody has ownership. <laughs> Somebody somewhere. And anyway, I don't, I get myself in trouble talking about it, but sounds easy, but, uh, and it should be better uh, and easier than that, but. Thanks. Mm -hmm. okay. Second round of that first. Hey, Brent, you mentioned Beck, their quarterback. What did you see out of him? What kind of problems will he pose for you? Yeah, I, I like him a lot. Um, uh, just, He's um, he's instinctive. He's athletic. Uh, uh, he's confident. Throws the ball well on the run. Um, he seems to be a good leader. Uh, likes to play. You can see the emotion uh, without being uh, overly dramatic. But you you see a personality there. Team follows him, and uh, you know he's a he's consistent. Maybe a little more consistent than what they were at quarterback a year ago uh, is what I've seen. And uh, they're playing again. Uh, he's just gotten better each week and more and more comfortable. Again, Ohio, the Ohio game, he did not have his uh, best receiver, uh, and I'm sure that affected him a little bit. But they do a great job with their backs. Backs run tough. Um, their overall numbers aren't. Uh, eye popping, but they run really hard. They're tough to tackle. Uh, tight ends are big, long. They got athletic guys. They got big guys. They they do a variety of personnel groups. And uh, the receiver Noel is a is a really good player. They're getting him the ball lots of different ways. A year ago, the last couple of years, they had a receiver uh, that was tops in the conference as far as receiving. So they know what they're doing, how to how to isolate a guy and give him a lot of opportunity when they get a good one. And they 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 certainly uh, have that, you know, in 13. So, but uh, Beck, Beck is he was a national freshman of the week last week, and again that they haven't had many 300 plus yard passers, and uh, he. Uh, he really played well last week. Three touchdowns and uh, no interceptions, and just making a lot of good decisions. You know, completing you know roughly 65 plus percent of his passes. So he's doing a nice job. Okay. Come on, Curtis, put it here. 
Brent, when there's competitive depth in these players who used to play a lot, maybe not playing as much, how special is it for a football player to accept a new role? You know, maybe if you're a defensive player who played a lot of snaps last year, or maybe a running back just not getting as many carries as they expected. So, what was the question? Uh, how special is it for a player to accept that new role? That they're not playing well, I think it's now. I think it's critical to have the right kind of locker room, and that's not an easy thing. Again, we I don't take that for granted. I think lots of communication is important. Um, you know, that's why again I I, I like playing more guys because uh, everybody likes to play, and um, even if it's just a little bit, and that sometimes that's easier said than done. I get it uh, at certain positions, um, but you know. For us to to be the kind of program that we want, I want to promote, you know, um, everybody valuing the role that they have and making the most of it, and being a good teammate. I think it's important, you know, having a selfless, committed uh, football team that's going to celebrate each other's success and ultimately want the team to be successful is uh, is critical. And again cohesion and chemistry and building trust with one another I think it's really important so we got to do a great job of not taking that for granted as a staff and uh, and again I think giving guys their opportunity when they deserve to play play sometimes it's 90 10 sometimes it's 50 50 and uh, but if it's if it's 90 10 they need to play their 10 you know I think that's important you know so when we you know by by middle of the year to November you know you got a, a locker room that you know you got really good team morale because it you know, like I've said all along it doesn't get easier as the season goes on it gets harder uh, because you know guys get bored they get distracted uh, they lose vision and uh, uh, you know boredom is the probably the greatest threat to all of your success and uh, but for us to be successful, you have to go through a, uh, a boring routine every week, you know, uh, where most of it's the same. You know, the leader's got to do a good job. Myself's got to do a good job of keeping things fresh and fun, uh, whatever that means. I think that's important, you know, in a big picture, too. But uh, I want to celebrate, you know, some their success. You know, I think that's important that when they. Everybody wants to be affirmed in whatever role that they have, and they want to be recognized. So that's all part of all of that too, nurturing uh, the competition, and you know where guys are, you know, sharing a role. How much easier is year two of the buy-in compared to year one? Um, it's, you know, I don't, I don't know if there was. Uh, it's hard to explain. Uh, I don't know if it's um, – I think there's just more guys that are bought in. I think it's a higher percentage. And uh, when, I, when I say bought in, I don't – if you're not bought in, I, I, it's not like we had, a, you know, a bunch of bad guys uh, by any stretch. But um, doing everything that we ask you to do is being bought in. And then that's on the field, that's off the field, that's in the classroom, that's in the community, that's on the practice field, that's in the weight room, that's in nutrition. Uh, you know, it's, you know, just having a good attitude and bringing value, you know, your, your attitude and your effort, your choice, your decision, something that should never be conditional. And uh, I would just say that, um, you know, there's more guys that are bought into that you know, as much as anything, and they value their opportunity. You know, we, uh, practices have been uh, more productive because we have more competition and uh, more guys understand, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, practice should be run and uh, the competitive strain and, and toughness that it takes and, and all of our routines too. You know, there's a, there's a much... Uh, more of a comfort zone uh, in everything year two in all of our different areas uh, on the field off the field and in our development and things of that nature you know we're we've got more guys that show up here for you know uh, uh, we have food for them on Sunday uh, that you would think you know they'd be they'd be lined up all the way up and down uh, Jenkins but uh, a year ago on Sundays they weren't you know, and uh, not to the depth that we have this year. So to me, that says that guys are being a little more ambitious and 
going through a, n a normal routine, you know, treatment, uh, food, uh, film, you know, recovery, uh, school, all the, everything falls into place, you know. Uh, and that's a very small thing, but it's a big thing. There's a cumulative effect to everything. Way back left, John Rivers. Yeah, Brent, uh, we've seen some obvious uh, improvements across the defense from mm -hmm. last year to this year. And certainly over the last decade or so, uh, you guys are playing at a pretty good level right now comparatively. How close are you, do you think, to playing at the level that you have in your mind for what this defense should look like? I mean, like? We, we've... And, and what's next? What are some yeah, of the Yeah, I, mean, I think, we, again, we we got a long ways to go. I mean, we're, uh, you know, again, I, I, I have, a, have great appreciation and and uh, uh, respect for uh, the improvement that our guys have made, um, which we've been talking about for some time now, uh, that we have seen the improvement. But again, we've, they'll be the first ones to tell you if they stood up here, okay, hey, this is the, um, there's, at, there, there's um, evidence that there has been some improvement, but nowhere close to a finished product. And uh, that's hard to quantify for, um, you know, I let the, the tell of a season, the whole season. Let's see where we're at the end of the year. I think that will be a little more accurate to where, okay, you know, hopefully at the end of the, the year we've we've made, uh, we've continued to make strides and uh, improved individually and collectively. Um, that's the expectation. That's the vision. Uh, that's the game plan. Uh, uh, will our guys continue to keep their head down and, stay focused and driven and hungry and uh, humble that's part of it that we don't know and that story of the transformation uh, is going to constantly it's going to be ongoing and uh, but there has been some improvement made uh, to what degree I don't know uh, but it's it's good and uh, can be a lot better and and that's in every way uh, it's it's tackling, it's covering, it's zone, it's man, it's uh, precision and timing, it's alignments, it's eyes, it's pad level, it's physicality, uh, it's uh, consistency, you know, all of those things. It's red zone, it's third down, it's fourth down, it's P and ten. Uh, you know, we've had we had several mistakes. We uh, and I don't I don't want to sit here and make it a negative thing and be oh well, he's just going to say that that's not how I am. But I know uh, what my trained eyes tell me too. And and but our it doesn't matter if 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 I feel this way and the players feel something totally different. And, uh, and but I'll be the first one to affirm them, uh, celebrate the small uh, successes that we've had. They deserve that. They've worked incredibly hard. Our coaches have, the players have, and uh, but uh, we've again big picture. We've there's we've done accomplished nothing but uh, getting better, and that should happen. This is a developmental game. The more you play, the better you should get. And uh, so don't want to um, uh, downplay it. Uh, but man, we got we're gonna have a lot stiffer tests along the way. And again, I'm, I got long-term vision of what we need to do to to have an elite, uh, consistent defense. And we got we got work to do, uh, but we are certainly uh, moving in the right direction. Yeah. Side, second row, Mason. Brent, Woody Washington, just his leadership and consistency, how much has that meant to bring him along in the development of the other corners that are getting time right now? Yeah, an amazing example. Uh, Woody is just a first-class human being, first of all, just a great person, just a great young man. It's about all the right stuff. You know, excellent student, incredibly uh, humble and respectful, a uh, great leader. He loves his teammates. Uh, in every circle, Woody's popular uh, in the locker room, and not because uh, he's cool with everybody. Um, it's because of who he is as a person, as a, again, as a leader, as a human being, as a competitor, as a teammate. Uh, you know, jealousy is not part of the character of uh, Woody Washington, uh, but he is the model of consistency. He's, you know, he he looks himself in the mirror every day, has great self awareness, knows where he needs to get better. Uh, you know, and uh, but he's he, he's been a great mentor for all the youth that's at that position. Uh, how you work every day, again, just 
how you take notes, how you let the coach coach you, how you take responsibility when you when things need to be better. And that's not easy for anybody. You know, it's not easy for a head coach. You know, I mean, I screwed that one up, you know. Uh, but that's, that's part of it, you know, being – uh, a mature uh, leader, and uh, really proud and thankful, you know, for Woody. Okay, way back on the right, Chris Williams. Yeah, Coach, why weren't Gavin Sawchuk and Javante Barnes in the mix on Saturday? Just a week of practice. Should we, do you know if that'll be the case again this week, or it's too soon to tell? It, we just had Monday non-contact practice, so I don't. You know, DeMarco's going to evaluate that, you know, how they practice. And uh, so. Uh, third row middle head. Coach, I'd like to follow up with this question. Accepting there's a long way to go, how does it impact your defense the way you, you finish? Like the second, and, it's still a game if they score a touchdown. Second and two, you stuff them. Third and two, you stuff them. Fourth and two, yeah. turnover. Offense goes down, scores. You come back, intercept, game's over. Moving toward, forward, what is that kind of a performance in that situation do for the defense going forward? Yeah, I think, it again, it, it affirms what you've been uh, asking them to do and what it takes, how you got to show up every day and, and know how to go to the meeting. You know, if they, we had a few young guys that were sitting up here right now, they would tell you, you know, I'll stop the meeting uh, several times if we don't have the right focus in the meeting, if I don't feel like you're 100% locked in. There's, If it's coming out of the mouth, if we're watching it on the screen, we don't get to go back and just do it again. You know, we don't have an opportunity to teach you and learn, you know, every single moment that we're in here matters. And I want our guys to have that sense of desperation, you know, that sense of urgency, that uh, mindset that somebody's trying to drown you. You're like literally fighting for your football life every moment. And I think it takes that kind of uh, focus to be great. And I, I just do. And, you know, We've got plenty of guys that are blessed with talent, but talent's no good without all the other stuff. And knowledge is important. And uh, so we're constantly trying to, you know, challenge our guys to grow mentally. Being great students of the game is, is a culture. Um, it's every meeting room in the country is not the same, I believe. And we have an opportunity there to, uh, again, incrementally over a period of time develop uh, an environment where this is a, a critical part of my development. And the coach uh, can either fumble uh, or he can score every day. And I believe that. And uh, so, but the players have to buy into that. And so learning how to do that is important. And, you know, just as a group, we, uh, we, we were not very good at that uh, however long we started meeting ago. We've made a great improvement. Um, but the reason I bring that up, I think it starts, it starts there. The, the, the improvement that they'll see in themselves on the field only um, justifies all the hard work and the things that we're talking about, the, the small details, things that maybe we didn't do well in the game. As I told you, this is going to happen all right now. Let's not make that mistake again, and here's how we're going to do that. And here's what, again, if, if you put mistake on the, on, on, on the tape, uh, you know, on the field a week ago, it's going to be professional courtesy that they, that little screen and go play that they ran, well, you know, we're going to run it all week. You know, hopefully we'll get a little better at it because that's going to show up again, you know, until we uh, show, you know, that we can, you know, do things in a disciplined way. But I think discipline is where it all starts for me and discipline in the mindset discipline on how I show up how I show up to that meeting room how I walk through that building every day M me and I'm saying how I I'm talking about the players too the coaches the player the staff how you walk through that building every day how you show up to that team meeting is is a sign of respect and value that you have for your teammates for the team and for your own opportunity and uh, so you should come prepared and 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 be ready to stay. Again, doesn't that doesn't mean it has to be. Um, doesn't mean it doesn't have to be fun. Um, but chasing excellence should be fun, man. And uh, if you love what you're doing, you know it is fun, even though it's hard. And I want our guys to like embrace that, like like enjoy that, and learn um, just how you be a disciplined, excellent, you know, person 
working on a craft because I think those same uh, intangibles will will help separate them. You know, when they when they leave the game of football because that day's coming too. And uh, the focus, the detail, the precision, the consistency, uh, the mindset, the figuring stuff out, and uh, empowering themselves and equipping themselves with tools that help them dominate on the field, uh, but dominate off the field as well. But having some success last week or having success through four games or seeing a guy like Key Lawrence just grow up right before your eyes. And, and, and Key, you know, if anybody's had conversation with Key, uh, two years ago, uh, you said, man, what a neat, neat guy. Um, but he'll be the first to tell you that there were always these seeds of doubt. Um, he was a guy that just kind of always worried about, you know, the externals, things that he can't control, uh, you know, other people, environment, man, what you might be thinking about him, and instead of just focus on himself and focus on his opportunity and, and having great self-awareness, i got to get better. And that's not an easy thing to do for a lot of young guys uh, because they've always been the guy. Uh, but the margin for error shrinks when you get to college, and it shrinks when you play better people. And uh, he's, he's just had an amazing transformation, um, I would say, probably uh, since the start of you know, in January, uh, the end of the season, uh, and it's I'm really, really proud of him. But it's also a, um, it's another a reminder for all of us that 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 fourth year, that fifth year, that sixth year player usually they have their best years of football on the back end, not on the front end. And, and every once in a while, a guy like an Adrian Peterson or a Sam Bradford after a redshirt year will just like play at an amazing level. Those are unicorns. And uh, But most people, most competitors, most players aren't like that. It, it, there's, there's a developmental process and it's mind, body, and spirit. You know, their body looks like this, but internally they're not quite there for whatever reason. And so that's a, for me, for coaches, that's a really cool, and I love to promote that. I love saying, Key, man, I'm super proud of you and, you know, all the growth that's taken place. And you're a leader now, you know. It ain't just about you. Uh, you're a leader now. Guys look up to you. And uh, you're a great example. And look, you start focusing on your teammate's success, uh, having – humility, uh, showing up every day with the right mindset, and look how much improvement has taken place. Teammates see that. Certainly he does. That's cool for me. Uh, I love that, and I love to promote that. Marcus Stripling, the last couple of weeks, has created more opportunity for himself, and he'd be the first to tell you, man, he was uh, frustrated at times, uh, like a lot of young guys, when they're not having the results that they would like, or maybe don't feel like they, they're being recognized, or they don't have the opportunity. A lot of times it takes you to just look yourself in a mirror. It starts with the man in a mirror first, and, and having great awareness of what can you do to make this situation better, and then show up with a, you know, uh, uh, again, a, a a, a fanatical sense of desperation to do your job, do it well, and quit worrying about, you know, somebody patting you on the back. You know, that might happen as a byproduct, but quit worrying about that. We see you. And and that's what Marcus has done uh, the last probably three or four weeks. I started in practice, and, uh, and and now he's having some success. So uh, that's, that's a lot of fun. Uh, again, I love to see those guys in the last – year or so of their careers really having their best years and having fun you know taking all these burdens that sometimes it's self-imposed and then sometimes uh it's the environment you know maybe it's home maybe it's family maybe it's social media whatever it is and it's it's, it's really cool to see that that burden uh off of you know a guy like key's shoulders and he's playing free and uh and, it, and to me that's because he's he quit worrying about things that he can't control and uh, so really, um, I think that growth um, will continue to be um, evident for uh, all those guys as long as they stay, again, humble and hungry and driven. But it does, it makes that Monday easier. Everybody will tell you that uh, for the players. They're excited. We had a great Monday night practice, you know, uh, after a month of camp and four weeks of the season. You know, guys, have been, they've been going at it. And we... we it, Again, the workload doesn't get lighter. You know, it stays the same. The workload or load gets uh, stays the same, um, but 
can you stay focused? That's what happens in college football. You know, you see it. Let's say if all things are even when it comes to injuries, uh, pe you know, people stay healthy. Well, why do those teams, they look so good? Now, what happened? And I believe that guys just they start losing their way for lots of different reasons. They get distracted. And, and that's, the, that's the art of coaching. That's the art of motivating. That's the art of development of people, which I believe that's what coaching is all about, developing people. Uh, and, I, and I challenge the coaches every single day. You can continue to develop your position group from a leadership standpoint. you got to be a great example for them. You need to affirm them. You need to call them out when they need to, to be held accountable. But, man, you better celebrate their success as well because they need that too. And uh, lots of layers of communication I think is incredibly important so that you keep guys engaged uh, throughout the course of a you know a tough challenging season you know all the challenges that a season will bring you but success uh, brings confidence and, and energy and all those things and and uh, so hopefully that'll that'll continue I'm gonna close back right to Parker. yeah coach uh, you mentioned PJ last night mm -hmm. and Rudy's you've had plenty of praise for Peyton in the past what I'm wondering is you see two guys that were five-star prospects come in and have that type of impact as freshmen uh, how much does that surprise and impress you as a coach versus how much do you look at it from the standpoint of, okay, that's kind of what we expected given how highly regarded those guys were coming in? Yeah, I, you know, you know, PJ, uh, he might have for maybe just like a blink of an eye been a five-star. Y'all had him way on down there for a long time. And uh, so I don't know if he, he – you, you, if you ever talked to PJ's family, <laughs> uh, you know, they uh, – they're incredibly humble, amazing people. So he's not going to, you know, he has no helicopter parents. Um, he went to a program that, are, uh, that, you know, not a lot of people are necessarily talking about and uh, where they're not just producing amazing talent every single year. He's a blue-collar kid and uh, he's super humble, hardworking. Uh, nothing that has happened with PJ has surprised me. And uh, when, you know, we went on our first home visit, Coach Chavis and I, and, and uh, you know, PJ has a brother that got drafted, uh, plays for the Indianapolis Colts now. We played at Northwestern, and he had an excellent combine. Maybe he's 6'3", 280, and ran 4'5", and just freakish. And so we're bragging up PJ. Uh, and uh, his dad's like, who is, no, his mom, I, th I think it was both, but who is PJ? He's done nothing, you know? And and then they started bringing up their other son and like, no, he's done, he's got a degree, you know, he's a strong man, you know, he's got this, you know, great body of work, you know, he's getting ready to go to the NFL and PJ, no, he's done nothing. And, uh, and right then you're like, oh, we don't love these parents. And, uh, but, uh, so nothing he's done has surprised me. Again, he's just he's a, got great work ethic, and uh, he wants to earn everything. Peyton's the same thing. Peyton um, was uh, has been for a very long time a, a, a different player in whatever environment. He's had a lot of success, but he got amazing uh, parents. Uh, just great, great people. You know, Amy and Winston are just amazing people. Raised him the right way. Uh, he's a great friend, great teammate, great leader, super humble, lets you coach him hard. Uh, so he's had success as a result. You know, he can get out of his own way. And you see that uh, with some guys that have been affected negatively by their environment. Uh, you don't see it a ton, but it does happen sometimes. I, I, me personally, and I like to promote in the recruiting process, your butt's going to get in the back of the line like everybody else. Them stars, those awards, the, all the wins, your tackles, your interceptions, your passing yards, whatever it is, you can't bring it with you. It doesn't travel. And you're gonna, you can bring guts and toughness and commitment and consistency and mindset. Those things will travel, uh, you know, but, uh, but you're going to get in the back of the line. You're going to earn everything that you get. And uh, and those guys embrace that. So I think that's because of that. It has helped them transition, you know, uh, pretty well, and uh, and have some success. But y'all did have PJ rated down there for a long time. I don't know the timeline, and I just thought I'd take the moment to have some fun. But I'm right. All right, y'all have a good day. <laughs> that was that good. All right, see y'all.